So my epoxy clay should be hardened. The next step is to refine any areas on this that are a little boogery um, and then put on a layer of conductive paint. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so for this step, I have my pendant with the epoxy clay dry. It's been 24 hours. Then I have some little strips of sandpaper. I bought this needle file kit where I can use the different files that has really come in handy. To start off, I'm going to just look this over and find spots like where there's weird bumps or a lot of the time in between the crystal and my little hoop I've got. I like to straighten that out a little bit and then maybe, maybe on the back I'll smooth that out a tiny bit. And then I just kind of take the same paper to it. Super high tech. This I think is one of my higher grips, which is stupid. If you're not familiar, the higher the number on same paper, the finer the grit, which means the smoother it'll make it, but also the longer it takes to wear it down. So when you're buying same paper for this, I like to buy a couple lower grits and a couple higher grits so that I can, you know, really chew through something if I need to, but then be able to go through and smooth out any crazy lines. So now I'm going to take the round file. I'm gonna let's see, open up the top of this guy. Use this to smooth out that interior section. And you have to kind of be careful and try to hit like the metal and the stone as little as possible. That's a lot smoother than it was. So I just folded the sandpaper in half and I'm gonna use that to try to get, there we go, in that section a little bit better. So I'm not really reshaping it that much. I'm just kind of getting rid of some of the bumps that were in there. Pull out the flat file. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna kind of try to smooth out the front shape just a little bit. So I think that about does it. So now I'm gonna get everything put away for this pendant. And really so far, I've been using um, this uh, conductive paint. I've been using this conductive paint. Um, it's the alcohol formula. And I bought it from a company called Enchanted Leaves. And so far I like it a lot. Um, it has, I, I do this every time, it has some black tape that you keep around the top um, to just kind of add an extra layer of air tightness so that hopefully it won't dry out quite so fast. Let's see, I do like to put on gloves for this stuff. So the oils on your hands um, aren't exactly great for the conductive paint it makes it more difficult for it to do its job whenever it's in the electroforming bath but also you know I don't think this stuff is exactly great for you and so if I can just keep it off my hands it certainly can't hurt and then if it 
actually isn't helping at all, then at least I feel better. So to me, that is reason enough to do it. My understanding is that this conductive paint is essentially a combination of graphite powder and rubbing alcohol. And I have come across information where some people actually make it themselves, which is intriguing. Um, I haven't tried it yet because I want to, you know, be able to identify problems. Because, you know, I don't want to be having issues with the electroforming and I don't know if it's because I've made something myself or if I have something set wrong or something's too thick or, you know, I want to kind of be able to isolate the problem. So for now I'm using the paint that I know is functional. Um, but it definitely is something I want to look into in the future for a couple reasons. Um, one, it does dry really fast. Um, I'm going to try a couple things here over the next couple weeks to try to minimize how much this dries out. Um, but once it does, I think if I add some like rubbing alcohol to it, I can kind of water it back down. Um, but in doing that, I've also watered it down too much. And so if I had some of the graphite, I could kind of thicken it back up. Um, right now I've got just kind of a <clears throat> dead jar of electro paint basically laying around because I watered it down too much or alcoholed it down too much. <laughs> I also think it would be a little bit cheaper maybe, so it's something I might try, maybe, maybe not. So this is tricky because I used black epoxy clay like a silly person, um, but you can see the difference in sheen so that you can tell where you've painted. The conductive paint dries really quickly and it's super matte. All right, <clears throat> I think that's the first coat, I'm gonna let it it for a few minutes here. You're supposed to leave about 20 minutes between coats. Then I will come back and add the second coat. So in the meantime, I have this jar of extremely dirty um, just rubbing alcohol that I've been cleaning my brushes in. That way it doesn't it completely filthy and we're in the brushes but I will come back and do that in about 20 minutes all right in the meantime part of my laundry we're gonna check on my rectifier that I have going on a different project so we can look and see what's happening it seems to be working well so far so I'm just gonna let it keep going it's been going for about 45 minutes so far but I will go over how all this works in a future video. All right, so it's been a hot minute. I didn't wanna leave my paint open, that's important. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and, so now I can go ahead and do the second coat. It's just like before, I try to, I try to kind of have a plan of attack, I guess start in one area and move relatively uh, methodically toward the other side. That way I know what I've painted because it's, especially for the second coat, it's hard to tell where the paint is because it dries so quickly, which is a good thing, but you know. And you just want to do thin coats. Um, I was having issues with a couple of my um, pieces coming out. Like, they look like crackled. It was really bizarre. And I messed with it. I thought maybe my electroforming bath was dirty. I thought maybe the copper coil that's in the bath was used up to I couldn't figure out what it was but I really think what was happening was a combination of my 
paint getting too thick and kind of piling on layers that were too thick. Um, and then it just, it just cracked in the electroforming process, which was wild. So I'm gonna just do nice thin coats. All right, I think that is two coats. So now I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to put the lid on my conductive paint along with a little piece of, I think it's electrical tape. To make sure that it dries out as little as humanly possible. I'm gonna clean my brush again. Okay, so <clears throat> pick this up carefully here. Boop. All right, so I'm trying not to touch the conductive paint with my hands to keep it nice and clean. So this needs to cure for, the jar says 24 hours. Um, I have put it in the bath as soon as right after the paint looks dry. Um, I'm gonna let it cure at least for a couple hours because I actually have another bath running right now. So I can't, rely on my impatience to put it in immediately. Um, so one thing that I didn't go over in this video because I didn't need to for this stone, but is still important is actually protecting your natural object. So depending on what you're using, um, before you put it in the bath, at some point you might need to put a layer of some kind of protection over it. So for some stones, um, say, I honestly use it for most of them except quartz. Um, Labradorite, for example, I know is one that needs protection. Otherwise the acid in the bath will kind of chew away at it. Um, and so to do this, you can use either liquid latex or clear nail polish. <laughs> um, and these are, again, something I'll go over later um, depending on which you're using. I like to do it a, a different step in the process, but just make sure if you are like me and getting excited and carried away, um, you think about what kind of object you are putting in the bath and if it needs protecting, don't forget to do that step. Um, for example, I have a couple that I have put together that include seashells um, and I make, I'm gonna make sure I put a layer of liquid latex over the exposed shell so it doesn't get destroyed in the bath. Um, so once, once this cures, I will be able to put it in the electroforming bath, hook it up to the rectifier and um, get that copper on there. So that'll be super fun and exciting. Um, the next, and that will most likely be the next video I make. So. Hopefully you'll stick around and it'll help you out. So thanks.